Oh, Father God, we come before you right now, and we just thank you for this opportunity that you have given us, God. And we're praying right now, God, that you just move supernaturally, God, in this place. Father, I need you to use my mind, my mouth, and my body, everything that's within me, <clears throat> to impart a well-timed word into the hearts of your people. Father, we're ready, God. We're, we're ready, God, for confirmation. We're ready for conviction. We're ready, Father God, for revelation. So, Father, you do it this morning, and we'll receive it. And, Father, we come against every foul spirit, every demonic presence that would come to steal, kill, or destroy the seed of your word, God, that is being planted and watered in the hearts of your people even now. So it's in the name of Jesus that we pray this prayer by faith. And everybody who can agree with that, can you say amen? Can we give the Lord a hand clap of praise this morning? Amen. John chapter 21, 1 through 6. It's going to be our key text for this morning. And the Bible reads, Later, by the Sea of Tiberias, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples. And this is what happened. Simon Peter Thomas, also called Didymus. Nathaniel from Canaan and Galilee. Zebedee's sons, James and John. And two other disciples of Jesus were together. Simon Peter said to the others, I'm going fishing. And they told him, we're going with you. And they went out in a boat, but didn't catch anything that night. As the sun was rising, Jesus stood on the shore. The disciples didn't realize that it was Jesus. Jesus asked them, friends, haven't you caught any fish? And they answered him, no, we haven't. He told them, throw the net out on the right side of the boat and you will catch some fish. Somebody say, throw it out again. Can you say amen? Oh, we enter to the text and Christ has risen and you find that he has visited the disciples in the room where they were. He is spending up to 40 days with them. But he has not been seen except one other time. And so the disciples, you, you find that they're sitting around and eight of the 12 are just hanging out. And Simon Peter says, I'm going back to work. I'm tired of sitting around. I'm tired of hanging on here. I, I'm going back to work. Anybody with me? And you find Simon Peter uh, had a fishing business, and, and, and so he, he, he's going back, and others are saying, hey, I, I need some employment. I'm going with you too. And so they go out onto the waters, and they're fishing all night long. And they don't catch a thing. And as they're coming back, there is a man that is on the shore. And apparently they were not too far out. He was close enough that they could hear him. He says, friends, did you catch anything? And Simon Peter and the gang said, man, we didn't catch a thing. It's amazing that they don't even recognize Jesus. But they heed the words of this stranger. 
And he says, try it one more time. Uh, I don't know if you're in here today, but I, I want to talk to those who may be here that have tried doing things before unsuccessfully in the past. But now Jesus is stirring you to do it one more time with him. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, throw it one more time. Look at your neighbor, throw it one more time. Somebody need to praise the Lord right there. Amen. Uh, maybe I'm by myself, amen, but I, I, I've messed up some stuff in the past, and I, I've tried some things, and it didn't work, and I started giving up, and I, I thought that it was all that I could do, and it was just unsuccessful, but I found out that sometimes my timing was bad. Can you say amen? Sometimes your timing is a little off. Sometimes you're doing it for the wrong motive. But just because it was unsuccessful before doesn't mean that God is not with it. Can somebody say amen? Oh, look at your neighbor and say, you came on the right day. It's like an ambush. Can somebody say amen? And so you find that, that the disciples, they are trying to go back to work. Now, they've been with Jesus three and a half years. And Jesus has said from the very beginning that I'm going to use your fishing to not only be fishermen, but to be fishermen of men. But you find that Simon Peter, who leads the charge, tries to get them to go back to go into the regular fishing business. Are you with me this morning? And so his motive is wrong. What he's trying to do is not quite right. Because Jesus wanted them to fish men, not fish fish. <laughs> you may be in here this morning and maybe you are trying to do something, but your motive is wrong. Maybe you're trying to change something, but you're doing it without the instructions from the master. Look at your neighbor and say, throw it one more time. Uh, and this time, this time we need to throw it with his instructions. This time we need to throw it with his approval. This time we need to throw it where he says throw it. I need to be with somebody right. Somebody need to be with me right now. I, because you've been throwing and you've been fruitless. You've been throwing and you've been throwing it into a dead area. But Jesus said to throw it on the right side. Jesus said, throw it in a specific area. Jesus said, try it one more time and see if it won't be successful. And so as we sit here today and, 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 and maybe you have been trying and trying and trying and, and maybe it hadn't worked and maybe you don't even want to go in that area anymore. Because you've been up all night long. You've been working all year long, all decade long, but you've been casting your net in the wrong area. It's dried up. It's gone. It's over. And Jesus is saying, you need to move on and cast your net somewhere else. Oh, and that just seems to be the issue many times. And I can't tell you how many times people come and say, well, pastor, that I believe God told me to do it, but it ain't working. I, I believe that, that, that God wants me in this area, but it just seems that when I try, nothing's happening. Am I talking to anybody this morning? I, 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 I'm just trying over and over and I'm getting frustrated, pastor. Should I stick with it or should I let it go? Should I just stop and, and just move on? Or, or, or what should I do, Pastor? And the disciples were the same way. The disciples have they've seen Jesus resurrect, but see, it's something different about being right in your face and, and things are popping and things are going and you're being encouraged because everything's successful, but it's something different when you don't hear from him for a while. 
It, it's something about when you're praying and you're not getting all that extra revelation and you're not getting all that encouragement and, and the people around you have moved on and, and you, you just don't get that feeling like you used to. And you start to question because it's not coming as easy as it did before. Uh, see, I imagine that uh, Peter and, 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 and John and Andrew and all them before, man, when they were out there fishing, man, they catching fish. They had a nice business. But you find that, that as time went on, as they left the business and started fishing for men to come to Christ, going back was not as easy. Fishing again was not what they thought it was. Can you say amen? And maybe you're in here today and, and maybe God was blessing at the beginning, but now what you're doing, it's not as fruitful. Can you say amen? What you have to realize is that you cannot stay in one place for too long. You, you can't just keep going to the same old well over and over and over again. I must be on somebody's street this morning. Just open up the curtains. Just wave at me. Just wave at me. Wave at me. Just, just wave at me. And see, you, maybe you're going back to the same thing, and maybe you're trying to do it the same way, and, and maybe it's not with Christ enhancement. Maybe it's not with his direction. Maybe it's not with his blessing. Can you say amen? Maybe you're trying to do it for your glory. Maybe you're trying to do it for just you. Maybe you're trying to high cap, high ball, get it going, make yourself look good, swag. And did I, did I hit everybody? And you're not doing it for Christ. But I want to let you know that, that, that Christ still is with you. I want to let you know that Christ is saying, just throw it one more time. But this time, throw it where I say throw it. Look at your neighbor and say, don't throw it in the same old place. Amen? I don't throw it in the same old place. Throw it somewhere else or, you know, pray about it and, and follow the instructions like he told you before. Throw it one more time. See, somebody's tried it and failed. Somebody's messed it up. And, 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 and God hasn't given up on you yet. And, and I know people may have given up on you because they had expectations. And, and, and watch this. See, see, Peter goes out there and, and watch this. He got everybody else to follow him. Can you say amen? See, see, I don't know about you, but, but I've, I, I've asked people to follow me years ago into a business venture or into this or into that and, and got out there and it just didn't work. I remember one year we were at the university and we put on a uh, Caribbean festival. And we were trying to raise money for the hurricane victims. And we put out the flyers and put it in the paper. Man, we, we got everybody stirred up. Went out and got us a great Caribbean band with the steel drum. Boom, doom, 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 doom. Man, they were awesome. And so we, we set the venue up and, and, and we're ready to go. And about 6 o'clock in the evening, it was in the fall and, 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 and things were getting dark pretty fast and we were starting at 7. At 6 o'clock, the largest drop in temperature in recorded history happened in Austin, Texas. The temperature dropped 30 degrees between 6 and 7. Oh, we was outside, and they just playing away with coats on. Oh, my gosh. So we went from 80 to 50. Somebody need, to, somebody need to be praying with me right now. Can I tell you that it was slim pickings? Can I tell you we had all this stuff set up? Can I tell you that we asked everybody to come with us, asked the band, all these people to come, got them out there. Invested time, invested money, and, and, and nobody showed up but a couple of people. 
We, we went out on the street and, and on 6th Street. We trying to pull people in. And they walk around. Well, my head at home, man. What are you talking about? Dude, it's cold out here. We go back to the band. We like, keep playing. They coming. Keep playing. They coming. Nothing happened. And so I, I felt a lot like Peter. And, 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 and I say, hey, this is a great idea. You get all these people out there. And, and, and it was a lot of money. Can you say amen? And ain't nothing like at the end of the night going to the people saying, uh, A, we didn't make any money. And then B, I can't pay you. <laughs> Either one of y'all <laughs> can't pay the, the venue, can't pay the, uh, the people playing, can't pay anybody. That's a tough conversation. Can you say amen? And I imagine Peter was on the boat and he, he said, hey, we can make a lick if you just come with me. And he got out there, didn't catch anything all night long. No, uh, and I don't imagine probably around 2 in the morning, they like, dude, ain't nothing happening. No, 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 no. Hey, hey, just throw it out there one more time. Man, just hang in there with me, man. It's going to happen. And, and maybe you're saying just, you know, just, hey, let's just keep living the way we live it. It's bound to change. Man, maybe if I just keep, keep these same old friends, they going to get better. Maybe, maybe, maybe they're going to change their ways. Boy, y'all, I know I'm on people's street right now. Ain't nobody waving at me. Wave at me, wave at me. Can you see me? Am I here? And maybe you're doing things over and over, and maybe you're still in that same position, and maybe you're still running with those same people, and you're expecting change, and you're expecting something to happen. You're expecting to make some money with these crazy business deals, but it ain't happening. You're trying to do it yourself, and you're not listening to God, and he's not saying you're evil. He's not saying you're a bad person. All he's saying is throw it one more time the way I want you to, where I want you to, not where you want to. It's barren in your own strength, fruitful in my strength. Can you say amen? Look at your neighbor and say, throw it one more time. Just throw it one more time. Just try it one more time. Just get with him one more time. I'm happy all by myself right now. I, I, cause see, I found out that God is a true God, and he is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all I could think or imagine when I put it in his hands. Woo! Woo. Oh, he's good. He's good. And God told me, try it again. Don't give up. Look at your neighbor and say, don't give up. And if you keep on going, watch this. Verse number seven says, and disciples whom Jesus, the disciple who Jesus loved said to Peter, it's the Lord. And when Simon Peter heard, somebody say he heard, that it was the Lord, he put back on his shirt that he had taken off and he jumped into the sea. Can I tell you, sometimes people have to point out it's Jesus. Sometimes, sometimes we, we, we not listening. Can you, can you say amen? So, sometimes we don't catch a clue. Sometimes we're not processing and somebody else has to come along and say, that's Jesus talking to you. That's Jesus telling you to go back. That's Jesus telling you to turn it around. That's Jesus that's involved in this thing. But I'm losing all my friends. But I'm losing this. And I got laid off there and this didn't work and that did Somebody look at your neighbor and say, it may be Jesus. Uh, it may be Jesus. And, and, and sometimes, watch that, that disciple that Jesus loved is John. And so John is the first one to recognize him. And it's, and it's strange because, see, when you get caught up in something, many times it, 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 it shades your view of things. Can you say Amen. Yeah, you start looking at money and you start looking at, at other things and fame and fortune and, and the come up. And, and you don't see God moving in the situation, but you want to do it in your own strength because your motive is wrong. And so you keep doing it the same way over and over. You know, people always talk about if you do the same thing over and over expecting a different result, it's called what? 
insanity. Are you doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result? Are you dealing with the same person over and over, expecting a different result? But they keep burning you. They keep using you. They keep messing you over. Can somebody say amen? Are you still dealing with the same business folks? They keep burning you, keep messing you over. But every time you get sucked right on in and they say it's going to be different, but you know them. It ain't never worked out. But every time you expect something different. I'm here to tell you today and deliver this message that you need to throw it somewhere else. Can somebody say amen? Yeah, you don't need to throw it, your lot in with them. You need to go fish on your own somewhere else. You need to try something on your own. You need to move on. You need to stop going back to that same spot. You need to stop dealing with those same areas that are barren. Can you say amen? And so Peter... Peter wanted to be with Jesus so bad, and I think that's important, that you want to be with him so bad that just at the mention of Jesus, he jumped. He didn't recognize him, but, but when somebody said, I, man, man, that looked like the Lord. Everybody said, that's not the Lord. No, I think it's the Lord. Peter, oh, snap, jumped in the water, started swimming toward Jesus. And I don't know about you, but, but, but when I just heard that he was a deliverer. See, maybe y'all don't have a testimony like mine, but I used to be out there kicking it. But when I heard that he was a restorer, when I heard that he was a healer, when I heard, I just heard that he could heal a broken man. <laughs> When I heard that he was a God of a second chance, I got excited and I jumped and I did whatever I could do to run where he was. Went to church all the time. Went to Faith Explosion. Got the tapes. Got the channel and started flipping on TV. I wanted Jesus so bad. Wherever he was, I wanted to be where he was. Uh, see, I don't know if that's you, but, but maybe you heard uh, that he, he was on your street. Don't let him pass by. I don't know if you're in here and you heard that he could restore your relationship. You need to jump. Uh, if you're in here and you just heard that he's a healer, you need to jump toward Jesus. I don't know if you're in here and you just heard that he could bring your child back that he could turn your fortune around, that he could bless your relationship, that he could guide and lead and build up a legacy in your family. If that's you, look at your neighbor and say, throw it one more time. Somebody say, throw it one more time. God is a great God. He's worthy to be praised. Uh, he, he, he goes on verse number eight to the others to, and he says to the other disciples that came with him in the boat and they come up late and they, it says they dragged the net full of fish and they went far from the shore about a hundred yards. Isn't that interesting how, how they had more success following Jesus' instructions than they did following man's instructions. Isn't it interesting that Jesus gave them more in a shorter period of time? Boy, some, that was shouting music right there. That, that was shouting right there. That, that was it right there because God can restore the time. Can somebody say amen? That, that the Bible says that where the canker worm and where the locust and where the caterpillar has eaten your life away, that God is able to restore, that God is able to bring back that our God is able. Oh, he's able. Can somebody say he's able? Well, we serve a great God. Uh, don't worry about if you lost something. Don't worry about if you were unfruitful in that area. Don't worry about if it didn't work out. But if you get with God and you do what he said do and you throw it where he said throw it and if you follow his instructions, you are going to be able to haul in something that's more 
than you ever had room enough to receive. Press down, shake it together, run it over. So men give it to your bosom. Look at your neighbor and say, throw it one more time for Jesus. Throw it one more time. See what happens. Throw it one more time and watch God do it. Come on, just high five your neighbor and say, watch him do it. Watch him do it. Watch him do it. Oh, watch him do it. Watch him bless you. Watch him change your life. Watch him heal you. Watch him bring it together. I've seen it happen. He's done it in my life and he can do it in yours. You watch this, watch this, watch this. If you look on that, Jesus is never far away. Jesus is never far away. And this is the thing that we forget. That all the time they were out there fishing, Jesus was within earshot. <laughs> uh, somebody going to get that on the way home. <laughs> if they would have just been listening the whole time, he was standing there talking about what you're doing. <laughs> uh, did you catch anything? Well, yeah, he's been on the shore. <laughs> maybe God is, yeah, maybe he's on your shore and, and he's just an earshot away. Maybe he's been talking to you, but you haven't been listening. Maybe he's been there all the time, but you've never looked. You've never listened for him to speak to you. Maybe you have reserved that for the last option. That's the nuclear option. I'm going to church. <clears throat> The nuclear option, I'm, I'm going to finally pray for once. The nuclear option, my life is so crazy, I guess now I'm going to finally read the Bible. Look at your neighbor and say, don't wait that long. Yeah, don't wait that long. <laughs> no, don't wait that long. Watch this. So, so, so following Jesus' timing and his direction led to an overabundance. How many people want overabundance in here? How many people want overabundance in your finances, overabundance in your relationships, overabundance in, in your vision and in your purpose and in your relationship? If you want that, then you got to listen to his timing and you got to listen to his direction. Can you say amen? Watch this, watch this. And I'm hurrying along, I'm hurrying along. Watch this, uh, verse number nine. And it says uh, when they went ashore, they saw a fire with fish lying on the coals and, and they saw a loaf of bread and Jesus told them bring some of the fish you have just caught and Simon Peter got into the boat and pulled the net ashore and though the net was full with 153 large fish it was not ripped or torn can somebody say amen boy that's just shouting material in there amen just all in there. And, 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 and watch this, this. Whatever success you're trying for, can, can I tell you that Christ has already succeeded in it? <clears throat> they bring in, they, they hauling in this load of fish, but here's Jesus. He already got the fish. He has the fish. He's frying it. It's a fish fry. Look at your neighbor and say, it's a fish fry going on. And you don't even have to bring the fish with you. <laughs> See, many times we think that, that, that we're bringing something new to God. But how many people know that he's already conquered? How many people know he's already overcome? Somebody need to pray with me right now. How many people know that he's already a successful God? He's already full of abundance. He's already full of love. He's already full of success. And you not bringing anything to the table that when you go that he supplies every need, every blessing, all peace, all joy, all abundance. Somebody pray with me right now. Somebody say throw it one more time. Throw it one more time. Somebody just need to get happy right there. And we're going to take a little praise break real quick. Just a little praise break real quick. And just bless his name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you in here today and God didn't bless you, if he did anything for you, I just need you to lift your hands. I just need you to clap your hands real quick. And just thank God for how good he is. 
Because when I was down and out, had no job, had no prospect, God came through and he blessed me, restored my marriage, gave me some great kids, gave me a great job. I know he's all right. I know he's a great God. Can't nobody tell me nothing different. When I threw it on the other side, he blessed me. When I listened to him, he blessed me. And if he'll bless me, he'll bless you. Maybe I'm by myself up in here. Maybe I'm the only one that God is blessed. Maybe I'm the only one that he's picked up, turned around, and placed my feet on solid ground. We serve a great God. He's a great God. Come on, we almost, we almost done. We almost done. We almost done. Just look at your neighbor and say, he's still worthy. We serve a great God. Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. So, 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 so you, you find that, that, that God is a God of details. He's a God. Of, that's what I love about him. Not only did he bring up uh, uh, the net, but it says that he brought up 153 fish. He, he's specific. He's a God of detail. Please don't ever think that God is just, please don't ever think that God is just, just saying, just, just go out there and do something. Well, just go over there. Just, just mess around over there. Just, just go over here and just, we'll just get to it, do something. Don't ever think God is like that. God is specific. God's going to tell you to do this and to do that. God is going to say, follow my word. His word is specific. Whoever think it's general. And watch what he says. Watch what he says. He's, he says that, that he pulled it up. Watch it. It was, it was overflow. It was so much that one boat couldn't handle it. It, it was, those fish were so big and it was, it was so much. Now watch this. That normally that net should have broke. But because Christ was involved, the net held. But that's a mo. Praise the Lord right there. That's the more praise the Lord. Because maybe you don't think you have the strength to go through with it. Maybe you don't think you have the strength to maintain that level of expectation in the Lord. But how many people know that he'll give you strength when you're weak? How many people know that he'll give you strength when you're down? How many people know that in your weakness he is made strong? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, I know it's some people in here, and I know you personally, and I know you've been through some stuff. Amen. Oh, y'all need to be the first ones saying hallelujah. Y'all need to be the first ones blessing the Lord in here. You need to lead the parade because you've been through some rough stuff, but you're still here. You've been through some hurt and pain, but you're still here. You've been broken busted and disgusted but you're still here i just want to let you know that you are a model that you are a model and you need to let your light shine and you need to share your testimony that god is alive that god is able that we serve a good god can you say amen can you give him some praise right now can you just glorify him for bringing you through can you just celebrate him for blessing your life when you were at the bottom? Can you just give him some glory when he provided for you, when you didn't know where you was going, what you was going to do, how you were going to eat the next day? See, I don't know how broke you've been, but I've been broke. I've been broke where we had to tell the kids it's vacation day when it wasn't because we ain't had to get Cause he won't give up on you. Cause he's a We've been in a spot when it's been so rough that that we had to come up with the idea to start fasting. Cause we had to give them the food. And we say we need to lose weight anyway. But I tell you right now, we can look in our cabinet. 
and we can pick out two, three things. We can look in our freezer and we got some meat at the bottom of it. We can look in our cabinets and we don't have a room to stick extra stuff in there because God saw us through and he said, if you just stick with ministry, if you keep praying for people, if you keep knocking on doors, if you keep preaching my word, he said, I'm going to bless you. Can you praise the Lord right now? God oh. is able to do. God is so awesome. He's said. awesome. Just look at your neighbor and just tell him, we do serve an awesome God. We do serve an awesome God. Hallelujah. And I, I'm telling you, if you just... If you just listen to him, if you just, if you just, just listen to what he's saying to you. And see, I'm going to end right here. I'm going to end right here. But in verse number 12, you find that, that Jesus says, come sit and have breakfast with me. And none of the disciples dared to ask who he was. Because the Bible says they knew it was God. When God brings you through when nobody else could, you don't have to say, is that you, Lord? You don't have to say, God, did you bless me? You don't have to say, I, I hope that was you, God, because you know who it was that brought you. You know who it was that healed your relationship. You know who it was that provided for you. You know who it was that turned your child around that was hell bent. You know who it was. He said, come and sit, and I'll provide for you. The Bible says he'll set a table before your enemies. Yes. Oh, a table before your enemies. And it is his spirit that will confirm that it's Jesus. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. It ain't nobody else but Jesus. It's not the counselor. It's Jesus. It's not your degree. It's Jesus. It's, it's not your hustle. It's Jesus. It ain't nothing but Jesus. Can you say amen? See, see, Mike Yonakoli said, faith is not the way around pain it is the way through pain he says faith does not get rid of opposition it invites it over for dinner faith does not give you the winning point at the last second it ties the game and sends you into overtime faith doesn't give you the solution it forces you to find it Faith doesn't teach you at the moment. It teaches you in retrospect. Faith doesn't provide a net to fall into when your fingers are about to give away when you're hanging suspended on a cliff. Faith gives your fingers the strength to hang on just a little longer. Boy, somebody needs to praise the Lord right there. Somebody needs to praise the Lord right there. And I'm here to tell you, that, that God is trying to tell you just, to, just one more time. Just one more time, throw it. Just one more time, cast it. Just one more time, go for it. Just one more time, try a biblical marriage. Just one more time, you study as hard as you can. Just, just one more time, be faithful in the position that you are. Don't just quit, hang in there. Don't just stay. Just try to be productive. Try to give some input. Just one more time. Christ is trying to tell you that you can do all things through him that strengthens you. One more time. Just one more time. Cast that net. Hallelujah.